Hi folks, this is Perry. I'm going to do a quick teardown video of this uh, thread rolling head just to show you how it goes together and how it works. Now I did find the documentation from LMT FET on their thread rolling heads and this says Namco is the brand on it and it is you know, it's possible that Namco made it, but I think it's more likely that it's an LMT FET head or Namco slapped their name on it or uh, Namco made it under license from LMT FET because the guts of this thing match the pictures of the LMT FET uh, instructions. So first, let's start out with what we have here. I took the front plate off, which is nothing more than just a capture plate to hold the rolls in place. What you have is uh, you have these uh, you have three rolls and they're marked one, two, and three. And the way that you're supposed to order these is that they're they're one, two, three, or A, B, C. Now, unfortunately, on the back of this head, whoever had these rolls marked. Uh, let's see. One of these isn't right. See, that's number two, and they marked C on it. And this one is marked number three from the factory, and it's got a B on it. And that tells me something ain't right. Uh, I have another set of rolls that has the same markings on it. So it's pretty clear to me that whoever GA was that owned this head before, uh, he owned the rolls that were in it when I bought it, and he owned these rolls because they have the same markings on them. Anyway... Uh, the rolls are, they're nothing more, and it keeps falling over here, they're nothing more than uh, a thread form that is ground into a roll. And what the difference is between each of the three rolls is that the distance from the face of the roll to the first thread, which these don't actually spiral like a thread, they're just, it's just a continuous uh, groove. There's no spiraling. The spiraling happens in, in the, the cant of these. The difference between these is that there's a slight lead uh, difference. The, the distance between the face of the roll and the first crest of this, uh, this thread form is different on each of the three rolls. And I believe the difference is, is that since the rolls are 120 degrees out of phase from each other, uh, when you're actually rolling a thread like this, you'll start with one, and then as it spins around, the second one will hit 120 degrees later, and the third one 120 degrees later. So basically, the the grinding difference between these is the phase difference between each of these uh, crests on the thread. Um, I could maybe it's too much to go into at this time, but it's something that you know you can discuss on a whiteboard. Suffice it to say that a thread is very close to a sine wave, and if you understand what phase difference is, then it'll make sense to you. Uh, these rollers originally ride on needle bearings. Uh, when I bought this, it didn't come with the needle bearings, and I didn't have any documentation. But now that I have um, seen the documentation, it's clear to me all I need to do is order some needle rollers, and this will be put together correctly. Uh, with needle rollers. I made these bushings a while back uh, out of just some, uh, I think it was CDA 930 leaded bronze. So there's three bronze bushings that I made for it. And they seem to work. Uh, they're not ideal because they have more friction than the bearings, but um, they work. So these three threads, uh, they're 120 degrees apart, and then they're at an angle. Now this head says four degrees. Uh, it's got very faintly right here. It was really, really hard to see. It says number one, four degrees. And then it says FET thread rolling head. And then it says one quarter to seven sixteenths and Namco. Uh, so that's all the data plate info I have for it. Uh, I do know that this is a four degree head because it says four degrees on it. I believe the four degrees is this angle right here. It's this lead angle. Uh, so that uh, you know tells you basically when you buy a set of rolls, see this one says N1 on it for number one. And it's a quarter 20 UN. 
and then it's the number three and this is the maker's mark right here and I believe these are Cleveland twist drill I believe Cleveland is the little star pattern so let me bring that up closer oh hell yeah that works anyway so those are the rolls uh, these are the little cams right here and according to the instructions the cams get installed in a very very particular uh, order or orientation should I say now the cams are uh, connected through a planetary gear system and you'll see as soon as I get this apart exactly how it goes together so I pull this part and there is the planetary system. Now you see these D-flats on these cams. Whenever you, whenever you assemble it, you're supposed to assemble it with the cams like this. Oh no, excuse me, that's, that's operation right there. For a right-hand thread, the cams are supposed to advance that far whenever the, whenever the tool is clocked. Uh, whenever you assemble the tool, the cams are supposed to be uh, oriented that way so the flat is facing inward and if you look at the eccentric the eccentric the the highest lift of this eccentric is about uh, 120 degrees apart on each one of these and uh, there's a tangent uh, across this so that's how you're supposed to assemble it now if I assemble it with these thread rolls that way it doesn't work because these thread rolls have been reground, and they're smaller, and they're so much smaller that they exceed the pitch adjustment of the um, of the uh, tool. So, in order to be able to use these rollers, I have to uh, I have to assemble it wrong. So this one is number two. That one's number three. So I need to change the order of them. And this is number one. Now you're supposed to put molly grease on this and molly grease in the roller bearings and all that sort of thing, uh, which I agree with if you're going to be doing uh, any production uh, work. But uh, before we reassemble it, we'll just put the uh, retainer plate on here. Let me reclock it to the marks that are on the thing. There we go. We'll just put this back together real quick, and then I'll show you uh, the clocking. It'll it'll make it'll make a whole bunch of sense why this thread rolling head wasn't working. Now the other thing too I want to talk about is the pitch diameter. Uh, so the LMT FET uh, instructions say that the blank should be the effective diameter of the thread. Now effective diameter. It's not the typical nomenclature that we use in the United States. We call it pitch diameter. Now, I believe what they mean, effective diameter in the original German or French or whatever uh, LMT Fed is, I believe what they mean, effective diameter is pitch diameter, because that's the effective diameter of the thread uh, where the actual torque is transferred or the force is transferred in the thread. So... What they said is the blank should be the effective diameter, which, like I said, is uh, yeah, pitch diameter. No bigger than pitch diameter, though. So, anyway, uh, so this is how you're supposed to assemble it, and that would be the fully retracted uh, state of the threads. Now, this is uh, this is how it's supposed to be. This is the this is how it's supposed to be used in practice. If you reassemble it, the zero mark right here would actually be right in the middle of the adjustment range. So right dead center. And that would be, if you had a, a proper uh, test uh, thread to put in here and calibrate it, that's where it should end up. Now let me show you how these rolls actually adjust. So this is this is very lightly uh, grabbing the bolt, but as you can see, that D is well past uh, 
perpendicular to the axis right there. Um, so that tells me that these thread rolls are regrinds. And I don't know how much they've been reground. I don't have any dimensions uh, to be able to measure them and determine it. But what I can say is that is why I couldn't get a good thread out of it. That being said, I do know that I can reassemble this tool. Uh, so that's, that's all the way to the negative. I don't want that because I want some adjustment range. That doesn't fit. Okay. So we are right in the dead middle of the adjustment range with a sample bolt in there. That tells me that this is how, and I was right, you know, originally I was thinking that you could take this apart and you can clock it in three different positions because there's three different zero marks. And each one of those positions is offset one way or the other in the pitch diameter, and that's how it is. So in this case, uh, I set it at I, I set this snug on the test piece and then I'm right at zero in my pitch diameter. So I can reassemble the head with that setting. Now um I don't know how well this is gonna work. I have a piece of quarter inch rod set up in the lathe and I'm going to do some uh test rolling. Um I'm gonna turn it to pitch diameter, and then uh, try it with the, the head set at this uh, setting, which, you know, I might, I forgot something. Okay, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> Whenever you set it, you have to set it with the head engaged and not disengaged. And I think I have it set, I think the head is. Yeah, the head is disengaged right now. So, I gotta take it back apart and then re set it to engaged and then re clock it. Now, I'll show you real quick why it matters. Okay, here's why it matters. This right here is a spline shaft, fits in the center of that planet or that uh, sun gear right there. And that spline shaft is actually attached to the shank of the tool. This part right here moves around the shank of the tool. So that's that's armed. Now I need to find I need to find the the correct orientation for the tool with it in the armed position. Okay, see now we're at the other extreme end of that adjustment range. Let's see if we can get back in the middle of the adjustment range. Okay, now we're at the far end, the negative end of that adjustment range. I think I'll pick the negative end over the positive end because this will give me the opportunity to go a little larger on pitch diameter than smaller um, with the rollers. Because this is, it's a little snug right now. I'm not even bothering with the set screws. I've just got it set for course. Okay, now it's, the, the sample turns a little bit. Now, I can release the sample, and that's it. So, now you've seen the guts of this thing, how it works. Um, I know it's it's not exactly, a, you know, sort of a cutaway view of how it works, but uh, it should give you some idea. Uh, suffice it to say, the theory of operation is you've got... Uh, looks like you have a four degree taper this way and uh, maybe four degrees that way and that causes these uh, concentric rolls right here to actually create this this uh, angle on the thread and the magic of how that works I'm sure I could figure it out but 
I don't really need to know precisely how it works other than the fact that it does work and somebody figured that out a long time ago. So, thanks for watching. Bye.